Hi everybody, Jo here again and welcome to another Tuesday Crafty Catch-Up. I hope you're feeling well and I hope life's treating you well. If not, we're all going to give you a big hug, come on in, pull up a chair and you know what, let's put the world to rights. Let's have a little chat and see if we can make each other feel better. I've got to be honest, I lose myself in crafting sometimes, I don't know about you. It's so nice when you can almost just forget about everything. I put some music on in my craft room. Luckily, Eric doesn't mind what music I listen to. He's, he's very tolerant. As usual, my black lab is sat here fast asleep under my table. He always knows when we're going to do a YouTube, when we're going to have a, a get together. Anyway, today we're going to make this sort of design. You know me, I say this because I may just go off piece a little. And the reason we're doing this is I've had a couple of messages and thank you for those crafters that messaged me. Now, I know one lady was Anne and I'm not sure if the other one was Bev. So sorry if, I, if I'm mistaken. I should, write, I should write your names down. Anyway, you were saying you'd bought the new sticker stencils. And here they are. Look, let's just pop that out of the way. So these are the Lavinia sticker stencils. Fabulous. Look how much I've used mine. And we have two birds in the design and they face each other. And we have used those. If you're new to the channel, and I know we've got some lovely new followers, so thank you very much. It's always fabulous to see new subscribers. I get quite giddy, you know. Um, so we have used these on a card and in the journal. And also the leaf, this gorgeous leaf. And today we're going to use the heart. Now you get the inny and outy with these. They are sticky and reusable. And if they completely lose the tack, just pop them in some warm soapy water. You know, that liquid that you do your washing up with. Just a mild version of that. And then take them out and let them dry sticky side up. I mean, look at mine. As you can see, mine's got so much. They get bits of glitter and bits of gunk on after a while. So... It's nice, you can just give them a bit of a clean. Mine are getting to that stage, look. But I have used them so much, as you can see, stamped on them. And that's the thing. These ladies messaged and said they loved when we'd use them in the journal and when we'd stamped on them. Is there another way we can use them? So that's why I thought we'd come in today and have a go at this sort of design where we're going to be double stenciling with them. Again, it's just another fun technique and we're bringing in our beautiful Olivia and this is the large stamp. There's a large and a small of her. Now, I've also brought in the secret garden sign, but I've actually chopped it off to just use it almost as a, a sentiment sticker. But it's great. You can actually pop her standing. If I bring my um, stamp in here, I have seen quite a few designs where she's actually stamp standing on the gar secret garden sign. And that's lovely. Another idea. It's nice to have the sentiment, you know, making a wish because she looks like she's making a wish. So lots and lots of possibilities with this one. As always, I like to give you ideas of, of where to run and what, you know, what to do. Now, also, I had a play just before we start to show you. I created the design on a larger card and I used the leaf. So just to show you, mixed it up a little bit. I think it's nice to give you alternatives. So we'll do the heart one today. But again, this is with the leaf. So like I say, so many possibilities. As you can see, I get carried away. I start with one idea and I think, oh, what if, what if? And you know what? That answers another question. If your mojo goes, don't put yourself under pressure. Just go in your craft room and maybe pick up one ink pad, one stencil, one stamp, and just start playing. Maybe on a tag. I love tags. Or an off cut. Because then there's no pressure. You know, small designs I love. Twinches, thrinches, um, artist trading cards. These small little, it's just a topper. You know, create a topper, but while you're doing it, your mind, if it's anything like mine, starts thinking, oh, I could change the stencil, I could change the colour, I'll change the stamp. And before I know it, the mojo's coming back. And you know what, Mr Mojo's, he's a bit of a tinker, he is. You have to hang on to him. Once you get him, you have to hang on to him, that guy. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with a piece of card. Now, I think I got a five-inch square. Oh, no, I'm 
telling fibs it's a six inch square couldn't remember and as always let me just try and get some clean we've got a clean piece under there now i'm just going to start with putting that black sharpie line round so you know me have to do this at the beginning i'm not good like some of you and can do it at the end if I do it at the end, I'm bound to whiz my pen straight across my design. And don't ask me why. That's just me. So, so how are you keeping anyway? I hope you're keeping well. I know there's a few bugs, certainly here in the UK, seem to be a few bugs around. So I hope you've uh, managed to avoid them. Now I'm going to stamp Olivia and she's a she's a good size stamp and as you know I always say this I'm not a, a, a confident stamper and I have to come up with tricks to help me so that's why I find my copy of paper really helps and you know me I have to stamp to the side but in my head I sort of worked out that if I stamped her in the middle look and sorry you know me it's got to be on the side that that would fit so she would be in the heart so I sort of worked that out. I mean, you can you can move it all around a little, but that's the plan anyway. Now, as I say, some of you might need to use your stamp press for this. I try really hard to find ways of being able to do it without. They are good devices. And yes, if you've got dexterity problems, you know, I totally get it. But for me, I just try and see if I can almost boss the stamp probably me just being a bit silly but there we go and to be honest that's why I'm doing my stamping first because if it didn't work out I would just turn it over and do it again but at least I wouldn't have done my background you see so I put plenty of ink on probably overdone it a bit with the ink but that's me and I'm gonna put her just standing on the bottom tiptoes sort of reaching up right we're going to go for that and I'm going to give her a good press and I've got her on a large block just because for me the larger one I find works better and again I'm always keeping one hand on and just pressing a little bit firmer where her silhouette is because obviously that's got the most ink on And again, I'm just going to let that ink soak in, lift it up. And look at that for me. I'm really happy with that. And as I say, I am somebody that, you know, can struggle with stamping. So, and you haven't noticed, but I have just stood up. I find that helps me. So I can put more pressure on because I'm only sort of five foot, one and a half ish. So I find it's better if I stand up. Now, I must admit, to do the next bit you really need this dry so again give it a good a good blot now just to be on the safe side i have done that thing in the uk we have a program called blue peter and they always say here's one i've done earlier and in the good old i have got one that i, I did this one last night purely because to make sure it was properly dry now, and the reason I want that is because I'm going to put my sticker stencil on. If it's not completely dry, what I've found is that the ink goes onto the back of my stencil. Now, it doesn't harm it, but I don't want to transfer it to my next piece of work. But also, this gives me another one look. I've got like a production line and I can create this one when I finish this. So it's on one, must I've got two on the go. Now I'm going to see if I can pop this in the middle and see if I'll get a want. There we go, that's fine. Just catching that edge, but I'm happy with that. It's important to have it square. I'll move that out now. Now the stencil I've chosen to go on top is this beautiful one. I just liked the idea of the falling leaves. And this one's called Flurry. And again, I want to be mindful. I prefer it one way than the other, sort of with the leaves falling. 
Now the colours, you'll want to know what colours we're going to use. So if I just move this to the side a bit, can you still see? So I've gone for, I wanted a green, an orange and a brown. So I've actually gone for olive, russet orange and henna. And I've got my green, orange and brown brushes ready. So for me, I just find it easier to pop the ink and the lids almost in the order that I'm going to use them. Now you can take your stencil down, but I'm not going to. So it's a case of sleeves up. Remember, you've just popped in my craft room, so you're literally seeing how I work at home. I'm going to put my stencil on. Just want that leaf catching that top corner there. Right, I'm happy with that. And I'm going to hold it. And I find if I hold it, I can see through where, just let me move that lid, where these areas are, the sticker stencil. And I want to start in this corner with the green. So as always, I dab some colour off in my lid. That's my mixing palette. And I'll start in the corner here and gently gently i mean i want it dark i've got the most ink on but gently gently and i'm going to come about sort of two thirds of the way and then i'm going to come into the heart shape just into that top corner and i lift that up you'll be able to see can you see how it's building up now in with the orange next and I've got some in the lid, look, so I'll pick that up. And again, into the corner and down the side. And then just into the green a little. And then just move my hand a little. Pick a little bit more colour up, because you always want the corners deeper. So into the corner and then just up into that green a little. You do need to be quite um, dexterous for this, I have to say. And I'm just going to add a little bit of orange in the middle. And I'm happily going over her wing because we're going to decoupage her wing. So there's no need to worry about that. Now let's see how much orange yet. And that's a nice amount. And then into the brown. Now this brown's quite a deep colour. So I'll try and take some off. Oh, didn't see that, did you? We just moved that slightly. Let's see if I can get that back. That'll teach me. Yep, there we go, happy with that. Right, into the corner. And again, along into the orange. Just overlap with the orange. And then just to come into the base here. And whenever you do this, because we're blending the colours, I always go back in with the colour we used before. And just to go over that area where they blend. And let's have a look. Yeah, if we take that off look I think that is lovely now one little thing what I do like to do is just take one of the smaller brushes and just come in with that brown and I just want to flick a tiny bit of brown just down this bottom bit here and it'll just add just a bit of shade in this corner And again, that's me just being. Now, I'm going to put the lids on those just because I haven't got much room. And while that's almost drying for the minute, what I do want to do is grab my journal. And let's find a, an empty page and we'll just spritz. Right, Eric, time to get you. Now, there's not a great deal of ink on here, but any that there is will give us a page for starters in our journal. And we don't want to waste that ink. Even if not much comes, it could be enough to give us a start, even just for colours. 
and you always just feel like you've, you've added something and some days again if your mojo's gone just having a little bit of ink on your journal can help so let's have a look oh you see there is look at that just pop that up there if I just lift this now as it dries you will see more and more appear but look you can definitely see the leaf here the leaf here so what I'll do is let that dry because remember you can always add more ink but you can just see look the leaves are starting to appear here as it dries you honestly do see more so so I'm just going to step over Eric and pop this on the floor and let that dry Now before, oh, let's just wipe our mat here, try and keep the area clean, get Mr Inky Binky in on the job. Now before I take the sticker stencil off, I'm just going to go round with my black pen. Now just be aware you've got ink on here and you don't really want it to smudge. So again, use your kitchen towel. Now my head may come over because I just want to carefully now I know some crafters like to do this when they've taken the stencil off for me I like to leave my stencil on but again it's totally up to you you may not even wish to do this you may like it without I'm going to do along the bottom I just want to be mindful to stop I don't want to chop her legs off so Sorry, Olivia, we'll just go round. Now, I could, you're probably asking why didn't I clean the ink off my stencil first. I found if I do that, I don't want to smudge the ink that's on my card. So, I, oh, and don't worry, the black line will come off. I told you, I've got this thing about whizzing across. So very carefully peel the sticker stencil off, look, and there we go. Oh, I missed a bit there. You didn't tell me, did you, where it was, look. But don't worry, we can, we can add that in, look, and nobody will ever know. There we go. And I think that works really well really pretty and it doesn't matter that this is just popping out look her wish is just popping out what i will just add with my fine liner is i'm just going to add a little bit of just something down here so sort of grounds her again don't overthink it now this will just wipe clean now i've got a cloth here with some water on and again look at that the fine liner comes off not a problem the ink comes off I say that's just water and I do it on my craft mat before putting it back on my little bit of plastic just again because if any ink goes on my craft mat then I can come back in and wipe my craft mat and then that will just get rehomed back on here there we go Now that, you could leave that if you wanted, but I thought we'd just do a little bit of decoupaging. So what we'll do is just on an off cut of card, which I had a spare piece somewhere, there we go. Are you like me? Do you keep all your pieces of card? I do. So while we've got her out, we'll just stamp her wing. Now again, you can either add one or two and we're going to stamp the garden sign as well. Now as I say, I just want the top bit so we can actually put that there, look. Now again, me being me, I would normally cover this with a garden sign and then I've got, because obviously I'm going to be adding this into my journal next week, can't I? So I bet I could have another one of those. And in fact, let's stamp the whole thing. 
might as well use the piece of card up and then they'll be ready because I'm sure I can add that into my journal. Now, to add colour to these, I'm just going to use my watercolour pencils. Now, you know me, I've got a bit of a, I do a bit of a cheat here. And I'm afraid I do have my favourite colours. So I'm going for a yellow, orange and red. And I'm only using those three colours. And what I'm going to do, and again, this is just me. So on the wing, I'm going to add some red up at the top. Nice bit of impact. And then I add my colours the way that I do when I'm blending. So now I'll add the yellow at the tip. And that's going into the wing. And then what I do is add the orange in the middle because I can blend it into the yellow and into the red at the same time. And I tend to keep my pencils in my hand. It just works better for me. So again, with our garden sign, I'm going to add some red at the base. And just up the sides on that corner there. I don't know if you can hear my, my neighbour's gardening. Is it's Obviously, we're coming into autumn here. And he's cutting his, um, his bushes back. So if you can hear a noise, that's what he's doing. It's that time. I just need to tidy the garden up ready. Our secret garden is going to be put to bed for winter. I must admit I love planting cyclamen in my garden and in my pots when it gets this time of year. Right. So what I've got now is I've got my paintbrush in my paint pot ready. And what I will do is I'll come in and always work light to dark. So I'll mix, go into the yellow and then just wet that orange look and then mix it. Just blend it into the yellow. Just going to add a little bit more water. And then, oh, look how the orange blends. And then just blend that into the red. And I'm only adding a little bit of water at a time because I don't want to overcook it. And then you, you can be... You know, you're in charge. You decide how much red you want to blend into that orange and into that yellow. It's pretty. So, the same with the wing. So, again, just blend that, that yellow first into the orange look. Then just add a little bit more water. <coughs> and I'm going to come in from the orange into, and look how as soon as you add that water the vibrancy and we'll drag that red down look and I just think can you see how lovely those colours look so vibrant and that's just with the three now you'd be glad to know I have got I've, I've cut some out already and again I've got those for my next one haven't I I'm really going to do well here So we'll just add a couple of finishing tricks and we'll come in with our with our white pastel pencil. Now again it's up to you how much you can use your white gel pen if you want for this. I just favour my pastel pencil but as I've always said we all have little things that we favour. I'm just giving it a little bit of a smudge. It's got a little skirt on there. And then just the front of the legs look just to catch in here. And again, if I just smudge it, it'll fix it. There's no need for a fixative because I've not used a lot. Just a little, just to give her a little bit more shape. I'll pop that back in the box. Again, pencils, and you to be very mindful, put them away and look after them. Now, we need a little bit of sparkle, so I'm going to come in with this, and this is my sparkly Posca. So I'm using the yellow, just giving us a bit of a, a shake. You always need to shake it first. And we're just going to add some little dots down here. You could use a gel pen for this. 
and again I just want to add a few little highlights look I'm just gonna and we'll add some over here and let's put our wings on I'm just gonna shape them a little bit oh no look at that I've blobbed some glue see if I can luckily for me it dries clear there we go now with the glue I tend to just use my finger just to bring it to the edge I want this flat we're just doing flat decoupaging so I'm just going to put that well that was a stroke of luck it went in just the right place and my secret garden sign so again put it away from my work this time just put a little bit of glue on then with my finger I just take it to the edges a this stops any seeping out when you press it down but also it just means that it will stick I don't want any of those edges not sticking and we're just going to pop that up here I just want it sort of parallel to that but a little bit to show so I'm happy with that now you can leave it there if you want to I just want to add some little splats you know what I'm like so I'm just going to take my Posca again and this time I'm just going to put a little bit on my mat and I'm going to get my brush out of my water pot. Oh, look at that. So you can paint with this. Now, I'm just going to add a few. don't want too many. could use my fan brush for this. And we're just going to add some nice splats there. What I'm going to do as well, while I've got it on my brush look, is just add some up here to my sign. Oh, and it'll really make it sparkle. And in fact, you know what, because I've got plenty there, I'm going to add a little bit on her wing look. Wow, that's really going to sparkle. Now, if you will excuse me, just because I've got it here and I don't want to waste it, I'm just going to add some onto here, what we, the one we've already done, and onto the wing. And then that's ready to cut out. I'm just going to put that over there to dry. Put that back in there. Now I don't mind mopping that little bit up because I've made sure I've used plenty. And somewhere I've got a nice piece of card to pop underneath. Now how simple and easy was that and so relaxing i just think such a, a lovely lovely design and what i've done is the space here for continuity if we wanted to add a sentiment if we wanted to add happy birthday or greetings best wishes there's place there and it would balance so you have got place if you wanted for a sentiment as well obviously you could put a sentiment there if you wished so if we move that over, I'm not sure if we've got enough room. And if I bring the original in, I like to do this just to compare because as I say, no two are ever alike. It's interesting. Sometimes it gives you an idea. Just pop that under there a little with colours. I think this one's slightly d deeper with the colours. So I hope you enjoyed that. And maybe instead of that, let's bring in the larger one, the square one. So what do you think? I have to say, I think it works well with the leaf and the heart. But think of the possibilities. If you need an anniversary card, we've got the gorgeous stencil with the heart shapes. You could mix the two. You could have your heart sticker stencil with your heart stencil, give you that instant border. You wouldn't need much then, would you? just an anniversary greeting or for a wedding or what about the two of our lovely little bunnies here i tell you what honestly the possibilities and this for our autumnal cards well what can i say it's that time of year here and that's what i'm thinking 
autumn colours, autumn cards. Anyway, thank you very much for spending time with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. And remember, you can stop these, you can rewind them if you're just popping in to spend time with me. You can always come back and have another look at the design and maybe craft along with me next time. And do share your makes, please. It's lovely to inspire each other because that's what we do. You know, we're so lucky at Lavinia. We've got such a lovely family and such a lovely community. So you take care, everybody. Look after yourselves and look after each other. Love and hugs from me. See you next Monday. And we'll add Olivia into our journal. Can't wait. Bye for now.